We think it's time that you add more color to your life. I think that's a really good <laughs> idea. I did recently. I, I put color into my chocolate brown <laughs> living room that you're always complaining about. It's chocolate brown. Don't you feel better? I love it. I, I feel love better <laughs> that you've added color to your life. <laughs> I, you know, I, I love color, but and I never intended for my for my living room to be chocolate brown, but I just couldn't get around to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just didn't take the time to do it, and I it makes me feel so much better. She comes in every day, and I've got candles going, oh I've got incense, gosh. I've got music, and it's, it's just, so different. It's alive mm -hmm. now. So, mm -hmm. our whole show today theme, in case you didn't know, is all about being colorful, full of color. Yes. And, you know, there's a whole science behind color, because each color has a different vibration, and that's why different colors make you feel different mm -hmm. ways. And it's so wonderful. I mean, you can tell how I love color. <laughs> I have my little angel here every, every week. And so, from the clothes that we wear to how we surround ourselves in our home, look at this, I've got this whole thing going, uh, it's really important to bring color into your life. Mm -hmm. Now, Heidi has certainly done that with her project today. I have, you know, um, I love to mosaic, so again, I, I love the color, I love picking out the tiles, I love the, the shapes. One of my friends had this particular um, plate, which I have never even seen this before. She found it at a garage sale and she gave it to me, which there was only like one plate and there was some bowls. And I put it on, I, I cut it out, I put it on, and all of a sudden, the way that it went together, it just was color explosion. So, so I'm gonna so, show you. So the, the picture that you've been taking a look at is the inspiration for color today, but you only had one of those plates. So right. today's project is a little bit different variation on But you know color. what's really cool about it is that you don't have to like the bright colors because the, the other one is just kind of pastel colors so it's totally kind of the opposite end of the spectrum which is really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's Heidi's project. So for my mosaic stepping stone I'm going to use a plate for around the edge and I wanted to show you how I cut it uh, with a little bit more control. Now, of course, you could take and put it in a bag and you can smash it with a hammer and you're going to have all kinds of little shards. That's fine. But I like to use a um, wheeled tile nipper and this is the one I use. Now, a lot of times you'll see this one out there where it's just a nipper. I find that the wheeled one gives you a lot more control. So what I do, and be sure you wear like goggles so it doesn't um, Get it, uh, bounce up into your face and I just take my first cut and I just cut just on one side now if it won't cut you need to get you need to kind of adjust your your nippers so here we go it's just, it doesn't matter they and it always does it differently okay so then I want to go around the edge here because I want to put this around the edge of my uh, stepping stone. I like to cut that off. Now I don't usually use this one too much. There's, there's certain projects I'll use this uh, bump. So I still want to use this white part. So again, I'm going to cut as close to that as I can. And then just spread them out. And again, let's this and again just go in on another part and as you 
as you can see again putting it right there on the edge of where of the plate and you just continue until you have the whole plate cut Okay, I have my stepping stone and I'm actually doing it on the bottom of my stepping stone. The stepping stone actually has like a indentation where it's a little raised on the other side. So this is the bottom of it. So when you pick out your stepping stone uh, at your hardware store or your home, um, like a Home Depot or Lowe's, make sure you check the bottom because sometimes they have like, they're poured with like funky little things on the bottom and I like my, the bottom of it to be flat. So I lay it out the way that I want it, all my cut pieces of my plate, and this one I'm, cho I'm choosing to go around the outside edge with my plate. And also I have put it on, you can put it on like a piece of cardboard or I have foam core. That way it's easier for you to, to move it around because the stepping stone is heavy. Now all I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Aline's, oops, <laughs> Aline's Outdoor Adhesive. And it's a strong glue that'll hold my pieces on and I can use th this stepping stone outside. So all I want to do is I want to put a little bit of glue where it's going to touch. And then place it down. And it's your choice on how far apart you want it. Remember that, that whatever you're seeing underneath here is where you're going to have the grout. Um, I don't like to see a lot of grout on some of mine. Some I like to a little bit more. This one I don't want too much grout to show, so I'm going to get it fairly close. Again, just where it's going to touch, just on the edge. And we're just going to continue to glue until we get it all around the outside edge. So my whole outside edge is glued now. And now I want to concentrate on the center. So I decided on this one, you know, I could just go through and just glue another layer. But I wanted to put a little bit more color in here. So I'm taking some of the colors that I have in here. And I thought a line through here would be really fun. So I picked up some of my tiles. This is um, some stained glass. So what I wanted to show you is that a lot of times when you use stained glass and you use a thicker piece like a plate, you have it where the stained glass is very small and your piece is very thick. So I want to show you what I do to raise it up. It's a simple craft stick. Cut just a small piece of the craft stick that's going to fit underneath the piece that you're going to put on and you glue, put glue onto the, the bottom there, put your craft stick in, and then put your glass right over the top of it. And then you have it where it's almost even. And I don't mind having a little bit of um, where it's not even. I like it where it has a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to glue this. And also, there's a lot of tiles out there that have this um, texture on the bottom. A lot of people like to use that as, their, as the front. It's actually the bottom of the tile. If you use it, that's fine, except for just remember when you go to clean the grout off, you have a lot more cleanup work to do when you use it like this. So I put this as the bottom, put my glue on, put it in line here. And some of them don't. See, this one doesn't have just a nice, even... And remember, too, that, like I said, lay it out the way you want it first, because once you glue it, you can't change it. So, you, ha you know, wait, it, my daughter always says, lay it out the way you love it, because um, it's going to stay that way. 
And let's see, let's use another piece. Let's see if I can get some more pink in there. Here again is another piece of um, the pink glass, stained glass, so I want to put a piece of the craft stick underneath. And then I'm going to put the, this on top of that craft stick. And a lot of times, too, when you do a stepping stone, if it's actually going to be a stepping stone, you need to think about it that you have your, your levels pretty even because you could even make it as garden art and you could do like raised um, ceramic pieces on it. And uh, so you need to think about how you're going to use it. This one is going to be uh, fairly flat, so it can be used as a stepping stone. So let me finish filling in here and then we'll show you how to grout. I've glued all my pieces on and it only took them all oh, about an hour, hour and a half to dry. You want them where your pieces don't move and then you can grout. Now what you're going to need for, for grouting is you're going to need a bowl with water and a sponge. And it's just a soft uh, sponge. And some uh, cotton swabs, some paper towels, and I have my grout ready to mix. Now I always keep out a little bit because sometimes I will put too much water in it and so it, that allows me some to to play with so that I can get it the perfect uh, texture. And just begin to mix it around. And this particular color that I picked today is called North Sea Green. I thought it would be a really fun color since today's color. So, you know, normally I probably would have, I might have grouted this one white, but I thought, oh, that's a little bit too dull. We need something that's going to brighten it up. So this is North Sea Green. It's kind of a turquoisey blue-green. Make sure that it's completely mixed to the bottom. I can see it's still a little dry there, so I'm going to put a little bit more in. And I like it kind of the, the consistency of like thick oatmeal or peanut butter. And just make sure it's completely mixed. And then I just start to put it on. Now remember that the pieces that you have cut the pieces so they are sharp. So be careful when you go to put it on. Don't just really rub it in. I just very carefully smooth it around. And you don't need it too, too thick. You just want to fill in all that empty space. All the empty, uh, the pieces in between or the spaces in between. Also, I didn't put any pieces around the side. You can put pieces around the side. I usually, if I do, I only put like one row. But I, you know, I didn't do it on this particular one. I thought this would be just fun to just go right over the edge. And then I can just bring my, I can actually bring my um, grout over the edge. take some of this extra and just go right along the edge because remember when you put this in as a stepping stone it's going to part of it goes into the dirt area anyway so you don't need to go all the way down with grout or with um, the tiles. ready for me to wipe it off. I'm going to get off the excess off my hands and in my clear water you're going to squeeze out your sponge as much as you can and then just very carefully wipe over. If I have excess left on my sponge I put it onto the side of the container of grout. Go back over, wipe it off 
and then I keep a clean sponge. And all I'm doing is just smoothing out the grout. I'm not taking a lot off. You don't want to take too much off because then it starts to, the different levels will show. You want that grout right up to all your pieces. Make sure that my grout is smooth and all my pieces are pretty much uncovered. And I want this nice film on it like so. Now what I'm going to do, I can take my gloves off. I am going to hair dry it and I, I usually do this in classes so that, so that everyone can take their pieces home. And the grout won't be completely dry when they take it home, but at least they can see what it looks like. After they've spent so much time working on it, they want to see what it looks like. So I want to do that for you. So let's just take a few minutes and I'll hair, um, put the hair dryer on it. Now you can see that everything is kind of a chalky, the, the grout kind of turned chalky and dry. That's what we want. Then you just take your paper towels. I kind of wrap my finger around and I just take each one and I completely uncover the pieces. And this is just a quick undoing. Your, your real cleanup will be tomorrow. You're going to let it dry overnight. But it's just, it's a quick undoing of the grout or uncovering the pieces. And when it um, gets all dirty, then you want to just change, move your finger someplace else. And don't go like this with it. You want to just take each piece individually to uncover. This is the fun that you can see what it looks like. Now those little beads that we put in for the for the words, I'm going to dip my um, Q-tip in water and I just go over them, clean them off. And you want to make sure you do that before tomorrow because that will be hard to get off those little beads before tomorrow. And then just let it dry. And then in the morning what you can do is to spray it with like a Windex and clean up all that extra um, grout this on the pieces and it comes off just great. Now, when you're completely, the, nec the next day after the grout's dry, you want to seal it with a um, outdoor sealer, which you can get at your hardware store. It would be um, for sealing the grout and the stepping stone, and that way it makes it uh, great for the outdoors. And I usually put two or three coats if I'm going to put them outside, letting it dry about, oh, maybe a couple days in between, make sure that it's going to stay all the time that I have it in my my garden. Now some of mine that I had in my garden, I've had in my garden for like five years and they've never cracked. So be sure that you take the, the uh, precautions to uh, seal it really good so that your artwork will stand up in the weather. As you know, I just bought seven new stepping stones. They're all plain, so now I'm inspired. Well, you've always been inspired by this one. This I one. love this mm -hmm. bright, colorful piece. Those are my colors. But you know, when you go to, like I said, the the pastels, this one is really cool too, because when I first put it out, it's like, oh, this is gonna be boring for the color show. 
But it really turned out great. I like it. Color is color is color. No matter it what, matter. it's color. Now, keep in mind that when you go to the, the craft stores and you buy those kits that say mosaic stepping stone, they're not really mosaic stepping stone. They're like embedded concrete stepping stone. Oh, okay. So explain the difference, what that well, means. Well, when you buy a kit, they usually have like a thing where you pour in your, you're going to pour in your cement that's in the kit, and then you press the pieces into the cement. Well, I just have glued, you know, as you saw, just glued onto the stepping stone. Actually, this is less expensive than the kits because you're just using an old plate and you could do the whole thing with just plates. And um, your stepping stones are only a couple dollars. I think I paid a dollar twenty-nine yeah. for yeah. each of mine. So yeah. you take plates that you can get at garage sales, mm -hmm. at the thrift store, mm -hmm. and Friends. Break, break things around your house. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear, it's the funniest thing. Once you start telling people that you're using plates, they start ending up at my door. <laughs> they have their broken plates that maybe china that people that their mother had that broke in an earthquake or something like that. I have more people come to my door with broken plates and, and bold. It's the funniest it's thing. It's great. I love that. <laughs> now you have also, you have filmed and almost daily as far as, so you have a little bonus. Ooh, yeah. So be sure you uh, subscribe to the almost daily newsletter. Well, tell them what you're going to show how to do. <laughs> the most asked question on any time you ever do mosaic is, how do you seal it? How do you seal it? So I'm going to show you how you seal it. So you need to be sure and subscribe to Almost Daily so you can get that this week. So you have certainly helped everyone add color to their mm -hmm. life and to their garden. Right. 